G'day folks, Rod Moore here from Moore Art School. Welcome to another Learn to Paint Club project. Going to be an exciting one today. What I thought we'd do, I was down on Noosa Beach this morning having a bit of a swim. Um, it's a beautiful morning and I just got to that whole beachy sort of vibe. So I pulled out a little painting I'd done some time ago. Hopefully you can see that okay there. Um, I'll bring it a little closer. It's the Sorrento Back Beach in Melbourne. And um, I always liked that shot. I was there early one morning and the backlighting on the people taking their morning walk on the beach, I thought, yeah, that'd be a good little painting for us to do in the uh, Learn to Paint Club. it'll start to grey it back. And you can see that there. You can see that that's a lot greyer than how it's come out of the tube. It's lighter, obviously, because of the white, but it's also greyed off. It's not as saturated a blue as what we want, okay? So we'll just get a big chunk of that and let's just work that in. So I'm using the palette knife because you can get, it, get the paint down fast. Don't worry about it if you go over your lines. Remember the lines are just a guide. If you feel compelled to do something slightly different at the time, then do that, right? Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of blue just to change up the tone a bit, touch more white. I'll just get a little bit of that in there. And run that through here. Okay. Just bashing it on with the palette knife, just for something different. See, I've got that bit of blue happening in there. Okay. I might, I might just get a little bit more blue and a pinhead of red in there as well. A bit of white just to turn it back. Remember I said I want a nice loose feel. Don't just block in a colour here and um, have it all as one big block of colour. Let's mix it up a little bit and make it interesting. Don't have a work at that. It's just what I'm doing at the moment. Okay, now, I'm not quite sure if that's right. Let's get our dark in and see what happens when we put the dark in. At the moment, it's sort of because it's the only tone up there, kind of feels like it's dominating a little bit and overplaying its, uh, its effect. So let's get some blue. Now as I always make my mix, I'm now gonna make a dark, this is our gray blue. So I'm always gonna mix that separately. Um, I think that's a good practice to get into because I can compare that now. I can see how light or dark that mix was and now I can compare this one to it. Right? So we're gonna make this on the warm side we're going to do it as a rocky um, cliff face. And I'm not going to put any white into this. So this should be a lot stronger value and really come forward of that distant, distant headland there now. Okay. Which I think you can see that that's exactly what it's doing. Get a bit more blue into that mix. So I'm just cooling it off now for the lower section here, the sun's coming from this direction over here. So down in this bottom part here, it's gonna be mostly in shadow.
thing. Just uh, putting in some little showy patches there. I'll, mo I'll mostly be covered, but it will sit there in the uh, underneath painting area there. Okay, now, now we can see we've got this dark in the foreground, we've got this lighter mountain range in the background. I will cut that back a little bit just to uh, pull it back in size a little. So at this point, you know, we're in step two of the more method we're blocking in, and um, I'm probably doing a little bit more fashioning of the of the shapes here, a little bit more than what I'd normally do, and we're doing a little bit different with the palette knife. Now you could have used a brush just as easily, so don't don't freak out if you don't want to use the palette knife. Uh... that yellow that's already there. Okay, that's probably not a bad starting point. Yeah, happy with that. Just be careful of any wet paint. Okay, and then we just start to warm it up. And again, with the sand, let's not be too methodical and uniform with this. Let's get some variety of brush stroke and uh, try and create some interest in what we're doing. This is starting to come along reasonably well. Quite happy with it so far. See, I'm daring to mess up my Lines a little bit there, where I've got that dark. So if that dark had been dry, or should be dry, so you can sort of play around with the edges and the lines there a little bit. Now let's get some red in there. And don't start freaking out and going, oh my god, red in the sand. Well, we want to get some warmth in there, basically. I think we, as beginners, we tend to think too much in terms of. Um, Color, not enough in terms of value and temperature. So I won't go into too much into that project, but in other projects I've sort of harbored the point that to create depth into a painting um, we need to understand warm versus cool colors and uh, where to apply what. Issue there. Now it's starting to come together quite, quite nicely. Happy with that. Let's just get a little bit of blue in there. Okay, not too much. But, ooh, look how grey that's gone. Um, get it back with some more yellow and red. So the blues dominate a little bit, but we'll just introduce that a little bit, just darkening up that corner really. Can get some of that yellow. That's not all that time. Okay, and probably just put in a couple. 
couple of extracts of that in here as well. So you can hopefully you can see that my brush strokes are quite big and um, they're not very methodical. I'm trying to keep it loose and fresh. Sometimes you get a paint that way, it just it really helps you create a different style of um, painting when you loosen up a bit. Of the water, just lighten them off quite nicely for us, so that's good. Let's warm this one up a little bit. We're gonna put a couple of people sort of dipping together, like so. Okay, maybe a blue one. slightly bigger person and I uh, might regret putting this one in I think. I oh, know that works okay. So just a little cluster of people, don't overdo it. <laughs> I think that's probably the takeaway message. I haven't blocked them in you know like really solidly with the colour because uh, I want to try and indicate some movement with them. So we can sort of walk in. Nice little painting done, an easy one for you to have a go at. Come up with a pretty good effect with it, I think, if you follow the steps we've just gone through, take your time, but go for that loose feel. Don't get too tight and rigid and too controlled. Go for a nice loose feel and big open skies, big paint, you know, big brush marks like I showed you. Um, get a bit sort of abstracty in the rock here. Don't try and paint every stone and every, you know, it's just, it, have some fun with it. Make it a nice, loose, fast, fresh painting. Um, do it two or three times, you know, because it is a quite a quick painting to do the way I've shown you. Have a few goes at it. Do some variations on a the theme, you know, maybe try pushing the distant hill further back. Make it lighter and more misty, which wouldn't have hurt, although it is sitting back quite nicely at the moment. So try some different variations on it and uh, see how you go. And I'd love to hear how you've gone. As always, leave a comment below, um, questions and everything in the comments section or email us your photo, we'll put it up in the photo gallery in, in the Learn to Paint Club um, and share it with others to inspire them. So we'd love to see how you've gone with this painting as well. See you next time in the Learn to Paint Club and until then, happy painting. Cheers for now.